so it sounds incredible but we are going to our last province capital of Belgium Antwerp We are in Antwerp, the first impression amazing, look at this station, it was built in 1905 and it looks like one of those stations that you would see at uh, games of about the 18th century, 19th yeah. century. France, like the one in Paris. Yeah, we're gonna see it from the front. By the way, Antwerp is our last province capital. Our last province. Antwerp is the capital of. Very good. the shield of Belgium and the motto that they chose at the start of uh, the country in 1830 L'Union fait la force so this is the station from the front it looks like uh, in the Renaissance style and now we are going to the house where the painter, the artist Rubens was living. Yeah. Voila! Antwerp as a city exists since the uh, late 10th century, early 11th century, so around the year 1000 it got its uh, 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 stamp for, yeah, I'm a city, I can sign documents. And Antwerp itself is known among other things uh, for its diamond and precious metal industry so you will see many shops like this diamonds international and so on because it's what the city is known for it's also known for its harbor uh, it has a commercial harbor that we are also uh, that we are not gonna check the commercial one but we are gonna check the harbor area because there are two interesting museums there they also have a diamond museum in Antwerp but it's currently closed the main exhibition they are renewing it and then they will open I think at the end of the year or next year they only have a pop-up at the moment but it's not that interesting yeah so a pop-up exhibi exhibition as of August 2022 and by the time you watch this video that means you might be open yeah. looks very lively and very I think it's gonna be a nice place a nice city so we are at the house of Rubens the artist who was living here in the age of renaissance the golden age of the netherlands when antwerp was still part of the netherlands so we're gonna get our tickets and go inside so i guess this used to be the kitchen or the dining room So done with the Rubens house. We didn't learn anything about the painter. No. 
It's just a display of paintings. They have. It's another one where you really have to get the audio guide, otherwise you don't know anything. Yeah. And we don't like audio guides. No. This doesn't say much. I mean, this is only. I thought we're gonna get this uh, to learn a bit about Rubens. The problem is that it just says things about the paintings itself. Mm, so yeah. Might be the same content as the audio guide, so yeah. then it's pointless to come here to learn about Rubens. Yeah, unless you really, really love paintings and you don't mind about the other things, and you just want to read or hear about paintings, then it's okay. I, think. I guess so, yeah. So now we're gonna go to the next place. Um, first we're gonna take our bags, of course. We are going to go to the Antwerp story, which tells us about the story of Antwerp as a city. I think that's gonna be more interesting. Yeah. So if you wanna go shopping in Antwerp, um, it's a pretty good spot because it's full of shops. And uh, there's a lot to see here. By the way, that in the background, yeah, that building is the first skyscraper built in Europe. It's here in Antwerp. Yeah, it's from the year 1930. Um, it's called the Buretor, so the Tower of the Farmers. I think it's because Belgium was, I think it was in the 18th or 19th century. Belgium was very, was um, really thriving economically, and it was the fifth best economy of the world at that time they were really very um, prosperous so that's why they were the first to start making railways they made the first skyscraper and uh, Antwerpen was very wealthy because it was the biggest port most successful port in the region until Amsterdam took over. Yeah. So yeah, this is the cathedral of our dear lady. It's built in uh, Brabantian Gothic. So from uh, the I mean, the, the style is from Brabant, the duty of Brabant. And uh, it's here at this square, full of old guild houses, so where people used to have their guilds, for example, the guild of the uh, shoemaker, the guild of the baker, um, of the smith, and uh, somewhere you also have the town hall. So here we are at the Grote Markt, at the big square of Antwerp. You can see more guild houses, also over there and over here. These were all from workers in the past. And this is the town hall, town hall of Antwerp. You can see in the center the shield, the old shield of. Uh, yeah, Spain, Habsburg, so what was governing this place? And then, yeah, other shields and many flags of many countries. And here we have an interesting fountain. If you look closely at it, you will see that it's someone throwing a hand into the water. The story behind this fountain has to do with the name of Antwerp, the city of Antwerp. It said that the soldier Brabus, I think he was called, he uh, cut the hand of a giant and threw it into the Schelde riv river, which goes through Antwerp and also Dendermonde and other places. Well, throwing a hand 
in Dutch this ein hand werper because he threw the hand of that giant giant into a river hand werper becomes antwerp and that's why the city is called like that he, it was named after that legend of a roman soldier cutting and throwing the hand of a giant into the shelter river <laughs> coffee or tea with a piece of cake for 750 here at the grote markt it's definitely expensive yeah it's just a uh yeah, small piece of cake for 7.50, that's a lot. Yeah. For a snack, yeah. It's like 5 euros for the pie and then 2.50 for the coffee. Though I must say the drink with the wafer at uh, in Brussels was also 7.50. So I guess for a snack that you share and stuff could be okay. I don't know, but in Spain, for example, Spain and maybe Portugal as well, I didn't check. In Spain at least I know that you pay for a coffee, one euro or something, and then sometimes you get at those bars um, a piece of tortilla, a whole yeah. piece of tortilla. Or a mini hamburger. Yeah, for free. Yes. Oh, there, yeah. Cafe Mercator. He was from Duisburg. So this is the oldest building in Antwerp. It's where it all began. Uh, Brug het Steen. It's a castle called the Stone. Because I guess, yeah, it's made out of stones. And we are going inside because there's a museum that tells you about the history of Antwerp. The Antwerp story. With 500 million inhabitants, Bruh. more or less, Antwerp is the biggest city in Flanders. Here they show you several important buildings and avenues, neighborhoods that define the image of the city. It's a very green and walkable city. And it even has a university, the Antwerp University. Trendy neighborhoods like the south or the harbor area. Or the north, multicultural and lively. Many people went to America, emigrated for a better life. Did you know that the first printing factory comes from Antwerp? It's this one. They even printed maps. There's a museum dedicated to that uh, printing factory. It's the Museum of Plantan Moretus. We might visit it if we have time, otherwise, yeah. We'll see if we show show it from the outside or, or not. Antwerp is also known for its fashion history. There's even a museum dedicated to fashion. But by far, the biggest reason why this city uh, thrived so much in the past, in the Middle Ages, is because of the harbor and the access to both the sea and the river Schelde.
Antwerp has a lot to offer culturally, gastronomically, in terms of shopping, fashion, leisure, historically, and of course, not to forget Belgian chocolate and beer. And from the rooftop of this building, Hedstein, you get a panoramic view of the city. Of course, it's not the highest building, but still you can see some things. Like for example, there, the Onselieve Frauen Kathedrale. And that's the Ferris wheel, the Schelde River, and the harbor. So we are done with the Antwerp story. Um, I must say we learned a lot about the city of Antwerp and the province of Antwerp. Yeah. Um, it's definitely very educative and totally worth the price. It's seven euros if you don't have the museum pass. Um, if you have the museum pass, it's zero euros. And yeah, we really recommend it. And yeah, the view so from above, yeah. We also have the a tourist center in the ground floor where you can get a free map and information from employees. Yeah. So, thumbs up. So, we are getting close to the waters. Modern buildings combined with old buildings and garbage trucks. And then the museum where we are going is uh, between the Bonaparte dock, which is this one here, and on the other side the Willem dock. Bonaparte for Napoleon Bonaparte and Willem dock for William, the former king of the Netherlands, when this city was part of the Netherlands. And that interestingly shaped building is the museum museum and the strom but first of all we're gonna eat here on a bench i guess the video is already long enough to uh, split it so we're gonna eat here our homemade lunch it's nothing really interesting it's just the dinner the dinner from yesterday and uh, for me a tuna salad so, see you then in the second part or third or whatever.